welcome to another episode of the Choker Bros. I'm your host, Sam Tonight Prime. I'm Zach Bro. And I'm Cody Snodgrass. And before we get started, we wanted to thank our sponsor, Cards of Evilies, for sponsoring this podcast. Thank you, thank you, thank you, James Lockwood and your team. Um, we super appreciate you guys. If you guys don't know about Cards of Evilies by now, I don't know what Rocky was sleeping under. Uh, <laughs> go check them out for all your singles needs. And they have supplies, and they are super quick about uh, shipping. The other really cool thing about... Uh, the, the Cards of Evilies team, James Lockwood and his team, is that they give back to the community. Uh, James has been known to go out to events. I know he went out to, um, what was what was it? Uh, the, the I can't even think of what it's called. The musical thing? Oh, the... Um, Distant Worlds. Yep, I'm, I'm Distant Worlds. Yeah. He went out to Distant... That's what I was about to call it. He went out to Distant yeah. World, Distant Worlds, and like he gave out packs of uh, like custom-made packs that he made. Uh, which was really cool. So if you want to give back to the community, uh, go ahead and consider purchasing from James Lockwood. That would be super cool of you guys. Um, we have a heck of a lot of stuff to talk about today in the podcast. Um, I was getting some weird glitch pop-up things, so I have no notes in front of me, so it's 100% organic today. <laughs> uh, I will just be free-balling off the top of my head. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and start with what I think is the most relevant uh, situation, and that is Zach is qualified. Yes, finally. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about his qualification. Zach uh, qualified over in Orlando. Zach had the option, if you guys don't remember, he could fly all the way to New York and qualify there. He could go to Seattle and qualify there. Or he could stay right here um, and have a wall, an army of <laughs> blockers, an army of standard units standing in front of him, an army of uh, Cecil's. But <laughs> basically paladins standing in front of him to block for him. How'd that go, Zach? It's uh it's pretty Yeah. Twenty what was it, twenty five total players and I think <laughs> our team had eleven. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so Zach I mean... had eleven people blocking for him. <laughs> yeah, no, it was a I mean it was a great tournament. Um yes, there were real matches played. <laughs> there was a few yeah. Um, yeah, no, it was sweet. There were a lot of actually uh interesting decks which I enjoyed. It wasn't just a kind of like a super predictable meta at all so it was, yep. it was an enjoyable event to see everyone's creativity and uh see what's been going on over in orlando meta. right there was some really cool stuff that happened there were really some really cool decks um some of them i won't talk about because they want to be kept on the down low but you know yep. i will say that uh irving's deck was the coolest deck i saw there mm -hmm. um so and irving was super generous enough to scoop zach in um or move him forward you were already in yeah um, yeah and i and i would have liked to see how the deck did uh in the semifinals and finals um mm -hmm. yeah it yeah. was a cool deck it would have been an interesting matchup too obviously right. we can't talk too much about it but right yeah. anyway huh. so that was really cool zach got qualified we went out and had a huge huge d buffet dinner afterwards as is custom for our <laughs> outings um yep. it was really exciting we uh we got word from cody that he basically just s super scrubbed um okay. in his lq uh he refused to play the deck that i told him to play again common thing no uh, <laughs> that's not no i think i played i think we agreed on it we agreed on mono water we we agreed on a compromise that was that was like the <laughs> compromise but i do think that water uh, as i said last week is a really good deck right now um, yeah, it, oh, yeah. It, and it played very well it just i'm not i don't like going to nearly time every single match no, which in water a lot of the games i mean sure. yeah if yeah. you're not playing, if you're not playing like like the knights or anything like big like yep. you're going to time almost every time yep so in addition we have uh the crystal cup happened over the weekend up in seattle we had uh our buddy uh james flew all the way up there to play in it um things didn't go his way he, he spent a little bit too much time practicing fire uh and it just didn't work out for him he ended up playing water <laughs> switching at the last minute and uh I guess he didn't have like the optimal build that he was hoping for, but we did have some really cool people qualify there. It was really cool to see Brian in the finals against Azul for a Petite Cup uh, rematch. Um, this time, uh, Brian took it, so he flipped the script. On oh, them. was that a rematch? Yep, from the Petite Cup finals, um, from the Cali Petite Cup, which was really oh, cool. Okay. Um, it, it was sad to see. I, I think that it should have been an, a 2-0 for Azul. Um, he yeah. made a misplay. Those things happen. We learn from them. One of the things I really appreciate is that he ha he doesn't seem like he's been down about it. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, he's he, he it is what it is, and he's going to move forward. Uh, it'll be super exciting. He's he's qualified for Nats, so I don't think he's going to make the same mistake at Nats. I think he's going to do really well. Um, 
Right, for I was gonna everyone say that... else, Team Meta Potion getting a second round of buys is very bad. <laughs> um, that is that is a that is six buys uh, between them. Uh, that's a lot of buys. And if you don't think that it works that way, it it really does because the amount of information they can gleam um, from two people uh, mm -hmm. is a lot, which is pretty cool. Um, it's cool and it's scary, but it's cool. <laughs> um, we had a lot of cool stuff happen at the Crystal Cup, um, but we didn't get to see day one. And I know that we are super disappointed about it, right? Um, there's just some yeah. stuff that was beyond yeah. uh, people's control, I suppose. Um, and it just it didn't happen. I think in the future, we, I, I, I've said it before, I will keep saying it. I hope that it continues to be streamed. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, as long as Nationals gets full coverage. Like that'll be the redeeming. It will. Like, it will. Yeah, all of um, it. Yeah. If it doesn't, again, we'll just have someone stand over with FaceTime or whatever, <laughs> Facebook Live, whatever, whatever we have to do, we'll make sure that it happens. <laughs> <laughs> whatever happens, we'll make sure it happens. Um, the other, one of the other things um, that's worth covering was the was it Italian Nationals? Yes. Uh, Italian Grand Open. Or Grand Open. Grand yeah. Open. Okay. So, so what happened at the Grand Open? Uh, we had Vice Kings ended up taking it, and I don't think this was a with one uh, Nidhog, if I remember right. I don't have anything in front of me, guys. Yeah, so it's I... one Nidhog, two Genesis Avatar, two Kefka. So there are a lot of those okay. kind of haymaker <clears throat> cards included. Sure, yeah. I kind of like the variety of it, actually. I think that's a build I'd be interested in trying out. It... Not, not me, but yeah. <laughs> the Vice Kings deck doesn't like appeal to me, and I don't know why. It does seem very good. I think I would play. Like Okimoto's Oki list with the the Earth and the Ice before I play anything else. That deck seems mm -hmm. pretty cool. Yeah, and no. we had, uh, Joshua Freeman Birch also did very well. He got he the fourth, fourth right? Swiss. Yes. Yeah, third or fourth. Uh, he went undefeated day one. Yeah. And then ended up losing to the guy that won. On Wind Earth, teams. right? Uh, Mill actually. So it was the Phoenix oh, Lay Act, Phoenix Your cool, Ranger. Cool. He had the Sid Rains one oh, of like that's it's actually of, very classic. That's one of my favorite decks ever. Yep. Yeah, right next to Tricolor Monsters, probably. Yep. Yeah. Um, that being said, and then we had Experts, um, which we had uh, Mono Water took it, which was... Oh, for Soya, right? Mono Water for Soya? Mm-hmm. Which is really cool. We saw Mr. Cool coming in second place um, with uh, Scions. We saw a lot of yeah. Scions this weekend, too, the LQ. Scions yeah, are popping interesting... up more. Yeah, interesting thing about his list, too, is I think this is the first Scions list I've seen with three Gipple. So, uh, it doesn't have Dataluma. It only had two wall. It actually had a EX Cecil, but it had three Gipple, which is an yeah. interesting choice for pushing through damage in a. And he wrote, pretty, he wrote a pretty deck. long, lengthy, uh, not article, but if you look up X Death, you'll find it. Um, and it, it's it's definitely worth the read, as is all of his content. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, that being said, what else? What else do we have on this week's agenda? I know we're flying through oh. this. <laughs> we're just like boom, nope. boom, boom. Uh, I think that was it for as far as like national. That's it. Events. All right, guys, we're gonna wrap up this podcast. <laughs> um, thanks for joining us. I super appreciate it. Uh, join us next time when we when we go over six minutes. No, all right. What's <laughs> what's next, gentlemen? For a second, there, I'm like, wait, is he actually being serious? Now? <laughs> <laughs> Eight minutes and forty six second podcast. Let's go. Uh, so I guess taking a step back, did you guys get to watch the Italian Grand Open at all? Uh mm. yes, a little bit, not a lot. I okay. caught uh, a match. I watched up, it. I, I I you know what I watched. I watched the streamers because they're awesome. Like they're the the yeah, the, that duo is insane. Like yeah, yeah. That, that's just... the main reason I wanted to talk about it because yeah. I thought they did an awesome job. They ranched it. <laughs> There's that word again. Uh. <laughs> But no, I really think yeah. that they are the two best commentators. I've said that a million times before, and I think this we can just prove it. They're so much fun to watch, and their energy is so charismatic. Um, yeah, it's, it's really good. But the yeah. play was pretty cool, too, right? No, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't really comment too much. I didn't get to see a lot of this because I was gone all weekend. But... Honestly, I think there was a lot of misplays, if, I, if I'm recalling correctly. Yeah. Um, that happen which are going to happen and when you watch the stream you never know who you're going to get the first early rounds or whatever but yeah i don't that's that's what i recall because i just remember enjoying the, the chat was explosive um 
that was probably the best part. Um, yeah, it was cool. Um, and then x -burst was actually recorded. They weren't able to stream, but you can go back and watch that too. Uh, which is right. definitely worth watching. Um, what else? We're flying through them. Come on. Uh, <laughs> I got these guys and speechless. then obviously top cut of uh, Crystal Cup Seattle was streamed, and that was uh, an enjoyment to watch. Uh, getting to see Brian Berkeley and Azul and all those guys go at it. Uh, now, is that the same Earth Ice list that Okimoto played? Yep. Or are they, okay. I don't know if it's the same list as he played in the LQ. Yeah. Not but like they card both, for card, but They similar. both played it, and they both made a top cut um, at the Crystal Cup. Okimoto made a misplay um, that cost him his winning in. It could have actually been him and Brian in the finals, which would have been super interesting. Um, would have been really interesting because there's no way they play that out. There's just no way. And, but yeah, <laughs> for the stream, maybe they have to. Um, right. So maybe they just play out game one and then concede when the game one's over and then play out game two and then concede right before that's over. Um, yeah, there's which, no way uh, that he just takes the buys from Brian, right? Like, Personal experience, it's a super awkward situation to be against somebody you know who's going to scoop to you, but you have to play on stream. Cough, cough, Orlando. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone who watched that last game in the finals, Manian, just don't... You, yeah, to, don't worry about Ian's three <laughs> vampirits in his hand the whole game. Just, meanwhile, everyone hand. behind us is like, is he going to cast a vampirit? <laughs> like, why Why is he just, you know, letting this, these things go unchecked? Yeah, I guess he, yeah, he couldn't go to national, so he, he, had, a, he had the scoop phase ready. <laughs> yeah, which was cool, which was really cool <laughs> to, to go all the way to Orlando with us to help block. He actually went all the way to Miami, too, um, playing Mono Fire, um, Dark Lord, um, just barely missing top cut, but it was it was a cool deck. Apparently, I played him. We talked about that last week. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember. All right, but one of the things that I did want to cover, and this is something that I kind of wanted to go in depth about this week, um, is that as the game grows, you are going to get um, both the positives and the negatives, um, and, and with the negatives comes some cheating, um, and how to deal with that. Um, because it's not always super obvious. And so one of the things that uh, I advocate, and I'm sure that these gentlemen do too, is being super diligent and deliberate. Um, so you need to be, you know, when, you know, make sure that when you, your opponent shuffles their deck, that when they pass it to you, I wouldn't just cut it, I would shuffle it every single time. Always shuffle your opponent's deck. Um, and, that in, and that includes between uh, searches, if they play a star symbol and then they shuffle their deck real quickly, just give their deck a couple uh, shuffles. You don't have to go into like eight. Yeah, just like two shuffles. matches would be fine. Like just yeah, psh, just and then yeah. cut it back. Like, that's uh, always what I do. Always be shuffling. Uh, what are some other things you guys can think of that that, that they should be doing? Uh, pay attention to how costs are paid. Uh, yeah, that's a big one. And uh, not just playing cards, but like even like abilities. Or one of the more important and relevant examples is like seven cost phoenix. Uh, pay very close attention to what two cards are discarded because those can't be targeted to be brought back. So right. little things like that could cause differences. And and sometimes um, they and might it maybe they just they don't might, know. Yeah, they might shuffle their their yard um, as they're looking right. through. They might pay seven to clear Phoenix and then kind of like shuffle their their yard. Or they, or they shift some to the top like these are my options, and then you don't know which was discarded. Right. So um, just, and, and, and by like, the way, cards that are that are paid should not be going to the discard pile technically. They should. Mm -hmm. You should announce the spell, announce the targets, then pay the cost. Right. Um, so they should be announcing their Phoenix target first. Um, and if and if people did this more often, you wouldn't see things uh, like cards played for the wrong color. Um, you announce the spell, right. you put it down, then you pay the cost. Mm -hmm. It's very obvious what you paid for it. Um, instead of these yeah, like kind of put them next to the break zone so you can easily see what's been paid yeah there's one thing that zach does is a good habit yeah he sets them yeah. next to the break zone before putting them in the break zone i have to put them directly in the break zone um but i think i'm gonna try to get away from that because i would like transparency and i would like my opponent to also hopefully play that in this manner um, it's like even if you know you're not cheating and you know your opponents like you're cool with your opponent like whatever you just make make the most airtight like moves you can so that there's no possible way anyone could call you on anything because you i mean it's it's a waste of time it's it's unnecessary not to do it like yeah it's it's, it's ironic if 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 i'm playing uh let's say i'm playing zach and locals i will usually shuffle his deck even though he presents it to me now if i'm playing in a big tournament i don't and there's some irony in that 
And I think that what it comes down to is I don't think that Zach's going to cheat me um, specifically. I'm not that I think Zach's a cheater, but he's not going to cheat me. I was going to say I'm like, at all, actually. Um, <laughs> but, I, but during locals and during things, I always practice getting the habit of shuffling my opponent's deck every single time they present it to me uh, because I think that's important. Mm -hmm. um, yes, he does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One of the other things that uh, I think is important and being diligent about – well, actually, this, this, this both ties in. If you are noticing something shady like that, you need to call the judge every single time. Now, you don't get to complain that there's not a judge program if you never call the judge anyway. You don't get to complain there's not a judge program if you feel like someone's playing too slow and you don't say something. Yes, it is a travesty that we don't have a judge program, and I think we all want one. Um, I am very interested. I would much rather be a judge oftentimes than play. Um, even more so, I would rather, you know, commentate, for example, than play. Playing is fun, but, like, I like being part of the community, judging, commenting, whatever that is. Um, but you don't get to complain about these things if you're not offering a solution. Um, which is one of the reasons, you know, if we tie it back to, you know, the streaming situation, we, at least when we talked about our problems with the streaming, we offered some solutions as well. If you notice your opponent uh, doesn't like you to shuffle their deck, call a judge. A judge should be notified of this. Will the judge do anything about it? Probably not. But it'll be on their radar. Judges take notice of those types of things. That's what they're supposed to do. If mm -hmm. their opponent, if their next opponent says, my, my opponent is giving me a hard time about shuffling their deck, then I think the judge is going to have a talk. Listen, we talked about this. Don't shuffle your deck. If your opponent... Is, if your opponent discards for the wrong CP and you catch it, I think it's important to call and let the judge know. Um, and even I am guilty of not calling the judge for that. I think most of us are. Um, and maybe the the excuse for that is that oftentimes I'm feeling like we're not getting time extensions, um, which the judge should be doing. And I think that they're going to do better at that. Have you guys had any of those types of situations come up? Uh. A couple times, definitely like the paying wrong CP. Yep. Um, a lot of times it seems innocent enough, like where someone just says, oh, I just grabbed the wrong card. I know I've done that before. I'm like, ah, play this card. And I literally say the name and have a different card in my hand. I'm like, oh, sorry. And I just show the other one or like pitch whatever. Like I announce what I'm pitching for uh, cost so people know the colors coming out before they even see it. Just make it very, you know, fluid. Uh, mistakes happen. But yes, if you if it becomes a trend throughout a tournament, then... Someone like you said, they could take notice, and then maybe they have to have a talk about it. Yeah, I, I yeah. find that even I make that mistake of playing something without paying for the color, uh, because things are going through my head very often. If I were to do that, and my opponent were to call a judge on me, I would not be upset. I'd be like, yeah, you're right. And maybe I need that warning or something to kind of get it through. Like, okay, slow down, think about these things through, um, and right. make sure you play the right colors. Those things are going to happen on accident. I have no doubt that those things happen on accident. I also have zero doubt that they happen on purpose. If you think that you have ever, if you think you've never been cheated playing Final Fantasy, you're probably wrong. You're almost certainly wrong. Uh, so I do think you need to be diligent about those things. No, yeah, absolutely. Uh, most of the times I've ever had to call a judge, uh, they've usually been uh, pretty generous, like with a time extension or anything like that. Right. Mm -hmm. Like I know, like my first round opponent at Gen Con accidentally like hit my deck like completely off the table like part of it <laughs> what how did you actually literally... hit a whole deck off the table like it was like half the deck just like, like he, one... he went to cut it and he just karate chopped it instead <laughs> yeah like i think he, he went cut. to like... yeah he like cut half of it he and like, then, like picks hit... he like picks it up right so here's here's his deck right i can only imagine he goes to cut his deck and he just like throws it <laughs> like on accident <laughs> no he like he, he hit the extra stack of cards um <laughs> which he didn't mean to do it um oh, sure right but uh, like the judges gave me like a three or a two or three minute. Did you like, see the cards that were in there? No, I was like, here, just just keep your eyes up here, basically. <laughs> I could see like, someone getting nice pretty nervous sitting across from Cody Snodgrass. All right, like I can understand that. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Why? He's just gonna yeah, right? punt, he's just gonna punt the games <laughs> yeah. away anyway. <laughs> yeah. Let's <yeah. laughs> <laughs> be nervous. Uh, if anyone's nervous as Cody, he probably knocked his his own deck over. And there was. Actually, speaking of which, there was some nervous people playing me this weekend, and I was like, guys, I'm not, like, the player to be nervous around. Like, <laughs> like they'd be nervous, and then they'd just crush me, and I'd be like, all right, well. <laughs> cool. cool story. Yeah, I, um, 
It's funny. I uh, I have a great story to tell um, about a guy at our locals, Phoenix Rising. Uh, that's his name. <laughs> yeah, yep, um, it is. So, yeah, I guess we have a lot of unique names over in our Wait, area. His name, his name is Phoenix, Phoenix Rising. Rising. Phoenix yes. is his first name and Rising is his last name. Yep. Yep. Why, so, am I, why am I on this podcast? <laughs> I need to be replaced. <laughs> so uh, Phoenix does actually some speed runs, um, and he does some cool stuff in the video game community, but mostly behind the desk. Uh, he's not – he hasn't had super great um, interactions when playing in person in live tournaments. Uh, he finds people to be intimidating. He finds them to be rude, snarky, especially in competitive. He had never played in a competitive level tournament uh, because of the feedback he would gotten through um, – other things um and one of the things that he talked about during uh and he he beat me round two of the lq he beat me he, he crushed me playing turbo ice um yes there was absolutely nothing i could do that game it's it was one of those games where they just opened with the three card the three discard and you just lose um did it feel bad absolutely um but it was cool to see him doing well he was one round short of making the top eight um but one of the we invited him out to dinner with us afterwards, and, and during dinner he just he actually took a moment to kind of say thank you to us and just say like I have never um, felt like such a part of the community, um, and I'd never felt so comfortable playing cards with anyone, uh, be, just the way the Final Fantasy crowd was. And that's one of the cool things about our community that I just want to touch base on is when you have something like when you have someone like Phoenix um, who can just say like Hey guys like. This was amazing. I'm so happy I made the drive. He had never done that. Um, got on the road trip for, for playing a card game, especially in a competitive tournament. And he went really well, um, which was really cool to see. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, his buddy, too, uh, Jacob, Jacob, like yeah. he said the same kind of thing. Like He had never really done like hyper-competitive stuff like that before, and they're both really excited to kind of delve deep like headfirst into the game now and like really improve and get up to the level so they can – continue to play and do well in events like that yeah that, that, that was really awesome to just to see them kind of explore that um but yeah i i don't know i i felt like it was just cool uh, but he was nervous playing against me um uh round two or whatever and he ended up just crushing me i can tell he's nervous because <laughs> you're shaking a little bit and he's just crushing me i was like good game man i i mean i said good game whether i was thinking it was a good game or not i mean he played well um there was no blatant errors that he did so i it was it was to be fair it wasn't a blowout he started with triple discard um and i made the best of a bad situation um <laughs> and i and i almost made a comeback but i didn't but it, it was cool so we've covered that i i did want to i did want to make sure i didn't miss the the part about the diligence um and part of that diligence isn't just watching the cp it's not um just shuffling their deck it's calling a judge when either of these things are going wrong the other issue that we've come to um and i'm gonna let you guys really just cover this one because i think i've said a lot about it uh let's talk about timed rounds <clears throat> and top cut uh and we can tie in slow play because you guys have both had experience with that so you might have something to add to the conversation let's start with you cody uh so i think any form of top cut should just be untimed at this point um, okay. Do you care about logistics? Uh, no, not not too much. Uh, <laughs> so basically, I mean, if if timed cut is a problem financially, figure it out is what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's, I don't I don't fair. think matches are gonna go for like four and five hours or anything like why. No, and like... and Hunter Nance likes to point out a good point that they shouldn't if you have a judge at the table, which you almost always do at the final cut. If you have a full staff of judges on day one those same judges should be there day two. There, you sh there's no reason not to have a judge at every table. I don't oh. I don't know why currently they just have RB at the head table. Um, I think that like when you and I were playing Cody, there should have been a judge with us. There was enough judges at that event to at least have one between you and I and the next pair of players at the very least. Yeah, and I mean, and they were nearby, but like I think at Nats, we should definitely have, like, like you said, a judge at every table the entire game. Yeah. Even even if it was just becoming like a ninety minute time cut, like top cut, I think that's okay. I think ninety. I think ninety minutes is plenty of time. I think the type, the number of games that go over thirty minutes is is slim, but they do happen. And so, if you had ninety minutes, you could allow it to happen at least once, 
and you just play your next two games in a quicker manner or whatever. Yeah, and the part of the whole thing is it's kind of like a if you get both worlds being improved, everything just gets so much better. Like if you have a judge a judge program, we're gonna have more judges. The judges are gonna be at the tables. They're gonna know how how to actually judge events properly and do whatever they need to do, and and how to check in on players and say, hey, you need more time. And then we don't, like you said, we don't need more than 90 minutes because if you're playing that slowly to go more than that, then there's slow play involved. But if, and everyone's concerned about slow play now, and it's like slow play and times are kind of hand in hand, I think. Like if you solve them both, everything's fixed, right? Like, or even solving one helps the other. Like if you have more well, besides judges. Day, besides day play. one coverages of events, right. yes. <laughs> yes. But like, if they yeah. fix those three things. I could not sure. complain about it. <laughs> so, so, but yeah. So, if you get more t- calls on uh, slow play, you'll fix the time issue, at least somewhat. You'll remedy it, and um, and then all these arguments of well, the games will go four hours. Yeah, they'll go away because it can't if you're playing at a regular pace. Right. And right. yeah, but I, realistically, I don't know why there are games <laughs> that are played. There are games played at a reasonable pace that go forty minutes. Yes, absolutely. Like you're those right. extra ten right. minutes, sometimes, yeah. Like yeah, if you're in like I a think... crazy. Well, Sorry. I'll let you guys continue to hover, cover it. Yeah. I was gonna like... say if you're going in like a water X versus water X mirror, like those games tend to go longer because just sure. of the way sure. those elements play out. Uh, whether you're waiting for a Kanyazo bounce to wipe their board, or you need to like get past an Ishtola before you can do your summon to wipe them out, like whatever it is, there's always there's a way to get locked up on board. Mm-hmm. Where it's gonna go a while. And it doesn't mean anyone's playing slowly. It just means that it's going to take a little while to do the math. Like, this game has a lot of math when it it's comes worse, to... It's worse now because Cloud of Darkness is the math breaker for the mirror <laughs> match in water. Every single turn teeter-totters on who plays the Cloud of Darkness. Um, I don't know if you guys have played the mirror match much, <laughs> but the Cloud of Darkness is the number one breaker in the mirror. Um, and so when neither player does it, n- nothing's happening. And when one player does it, the next turn comes to a halt while you figure out how to deal with this cloud darkness because you cannot let it attack. Um, so right, if it attacks, you that's exactly yep. right. You sometimes you have to overcommit resources or whatever it is. Um, but yeah, no, I agree with that. It's yeah. Uh, <laughs> what about the yeah, spectrum but... of the players that um, don't think that 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 think that thirty minutes is fine? That seventy minutes is fine for top three for three matches. Um, Cody, thoughts? Uh, well, I mean, when I was playing ice, I was never going anywhere near time, so mm-hmm. I was very comfortable. But like this past weekend playing water, like I was asking Patrick, who, who judged uh, the LQ I was at, I was asking him for the time all the time, like it seemed like. And uh, I don't know. I don't so, think seventy. So basically, is it, for it, three it, rounds, it, basically. Right. Yeah, I don't think so either. So you would say it depends on the deck your style you're playing, right? Obviously, sure. If you're playing mono so, fire, mono mono lightning, or mono ice, like you're you're cool with your your 15 minute round time limit, right? Like it's just the way it is. Yeah, like and and I mean, that being said, like I think there's some like beginning turns that can be made like much faster. Like if For you're sure. playing lightning, like you're gonna play your red mage, and then turn two, you're gonna play your lulu, like or like something, or like you're a lua possibly, but like. But like you know, know what that is, right? Yeah. Right. Uh, it could come down to more practice, right? Like, the more you play a deck, the more you memorize the lines. So you can look at an opener and be like, all right, I got my 2CP back up, my 3CP. This card's unpitchable. Uh, so boom, 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 you just make your decisions. Like, it, as a like example, like in Earthwind, like if I am open a semi, right? I don't care what other wind cards are in my hand, that semi's going down turn one. It's just a, which is the lesser of all evils of these wind cards I have to pitch. Ishtola, Zidane, which one do I need for the matchup? Which one don't I? Do I know the matchup? I don't know. Uh, probably Ishtola play semi pass done, but that happens in two seconds, right? Like it's not hard to evaluate that quickly. Um, and maybe it comes down to more practice. I don't know. Um, but for anyone who's saying that, like, there's no time you should ever need more than like 30 minutes or 25 minutes or whatever. I don't want to be insensitive, but you need to play some of those matches and experience it to realize that it's not necessarily people are playing slow. It's not necessarily they're doing something wrong. The game gets complicated. Maybe you just haven't experienced that yet. And the other thing is, it's 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 (laughs) ridiculous to expect your opponent to play at the same speed that you play, no matter Mm -hmm. what. Whether you're a super fast player or a slow player, your opponent is going to play at a different speed on either side Mm -hmm. of the spectrum. 
Right. Um, I mean, we're obviously tiptoeing around the topic. I'm sure we have more oh, well, yeah, kind of I, brutal ways to I'm present sure our this. Listeners and, and everybody ha- you have to be tactful the... about it. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't know. Don't want to lose our sponsorship. Yeah, right. After, <laughs> I'm curious to see people's opinions after playing in the national level event. Sure, yeah. So this time, like last year, you bought a ticket, right? I had right, my ticket it's, in it's five minutes. Day. Like, oh, earned it. Sweet. I was quick. I was at right. work. Well, everybody else was, and I got to use my computer. Yeah. Right. This year, people had to work for it. And people are complaining had, about that. You have to grind. You have to work. You, you travel. You do whatever. You work your ass off, and then you qualify for the event, right? Yep. If someone gets cheated or they get they lose to someone going to time uh, when they were playing at a great pace and they just were a little timid, oh, they they're, they're, they're going to change their tune. Yeah. But it's going to change, and yeah. it's it's not a matter of me saying that uh, I've done this more than you, and I like no, you just maybe you haven't experienced it, but when you do, you're going to realize that it, it is a real issue. Yep. And it comes down to the whole confirmation bias, and and just like, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I've right. never dealt with it, so therefore it's not a problem. <laughs> right. That's right. absurd, right? Like that's just absurd. <laughs> Like, right, but that's absurd. Listen, I've never caught someone cheating against me, so therefore nobody cheats. Right. <laughs> Wrap it yeah. up, boys. Nobody's cheating in this game. <laughs> no, I and mean, that's not to say there's cheaters everywhere, right? Like, I don't expect more than like maybe two percent of people are cheating. Right. Maybe, not like Counter Strike, where it's like ten percent. Yeah, Counter Strike, <laughs> Magic. Yeah. Like, uh, like there's a whole group of guys that go to the local store around here that mana weaving. As soon as I learned how to cut for a mana weaver, they mold to four every game. <laughs> yeah. That's like, also cheating. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. No, I mean you're you 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 cutting them in a, in a certain, Oh really? Yeah. Oh well the judges weren't doing anything about it, so <laughs> listen, the ju- the judges never tell anything about it, so it's okay. <laughs> I've never come to time, so it's like, okay. You know, yeah, no. But no, I, I get what you're saying. Um yeah. but yes, if you if you manipulate your opponent's deck in a non-random order that is cheating even if you don't know the order of the cards but now you know and again yes. i guess it's not cheating because cheating implies intent now nah, you meant to do it so never mind <laughs> you, well, cheating. I mean... you, just, you just didn't know it was cheating <laughs> yeah i mean but remember i talked about zach the not cheating well, they eventually got banned from the store but, Flip I mean, that. Yeah. oh they got banned from cool stuff no 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 it's from the local store in lakeland oh because so... there's some cheaters in fine cool oh, it's the same too. people they just oh. haven't gotten banned from cool stuff yet <laughs> oh okay oh all right yeah i know exactly no, what you're talking about then yeah no that yeah, that happened scum. here and yeah anyway. yeah they're absolutely scum. <laughs> we've talked about that before yeah but yeah hey cody you're anyway, really quiet over there don't be afraid to speak yeah. up if you notice something like we tried no. to we, you guys were talking about magic stuff and i don't know anything about that okay uh well, but you, I do have a topic you, have, I wanna... you have some experience right oh, you have a topic oh. let's go oh you got we, we got we got two two minutes and 15 seconds left okay uh i'm just kidding no uh, no, but what, what you said about Yu-Gi-Oh, there's plenty of cheating and oh, yeah. a, load of band, a load of banned players there. And very well-known players are banned, and yeah, it's a mess. Um, but a topic I want to talk about is, because uh, uh, I've been getting asked, like people are asking me how am I preparing asked? for nationals. You don't need to cheer that with everyone. Asked. Oh, asked. okay. It's just, just like, all right, man. Mike we chair. get it. You got the nice hair. I get it. I, I'm not, sorry. No, but I've been getting asked uh, how... I'm preparing for nationals. Uh, so, Sam, what's some of the steps you've been taking uh, um, just to prepare? I am Outside playing of, obviously a lot of Octagon. All the time. <laughs> I'm playing a lot of Octagon. I probably play like 10 to 15 matches per day now. And what Sam is not saying is that I need to play more Octagon. <laughs> I didn't say which anything is, about my entire is... team needing to play more Octagon. Yeah. If they plan on doing well at nationals... Um, <laughs> But yeah, I'm I'm playing Octagon. Yeah, and I'm, uh, I'm, lots I'm learning of my deck games, inside but, and out. So, uh, I do advise anybody who is serious about doing well, don't just test locally because it gets very inbred very quickly. Yeah, uh, you start to metagame against each other. You start to think like, "Oh, my deck's bad because I'm losing to these same three decks." Yep. But you forget that in the national meta, there's all these archetypes that you may not be experienced oh, with. Or, yeah, whatever he's got going on there. Like, there's going to be more than just what your local says. So make sure you. Yeah, whether it's octagon or you just force your friends say hey i need you to take an hour of your time you play this deck i need to play against then we'll switch whatever you need to do but that's i mean yeah that will be the process <laughs> I, I, yeah what about I, you zach? I agree with both of those. zach are you are you what are you doing to prepare for nationals i know you don't have a lot of time you've been playing octagon uh spectating you when i can <laughs> Spect- 
Uh, I'll have Octagon in the background every once in a while, and no. the game's not like, you know, being crazy misplays yeah. everywhere. What about I'll you, Cody? Watch it. Uh, so, obviously, I'm playing three locals a week, and then I play pretty much every single night on Untap. <clears throat> uh, but outside of that, I've also been watching like a lot of the other content creators and like reading articles and stuff like that, which I think, as even as like, a, like as, if we're competitive players and all that stuff, I think can help us. Like, I learn something new every time I listen to sure. like, another podcast uh for instance like the frederick Burr turks guys like they've been killing it and i've been watching all their videos yeah they're uh, great and i mean just learning i like, like they that do. they don't tiptoe around the subjects that they covered this week for example that, <laughs> oh, that yeah. was a good that was a good podcast and they don't all agree either which is you know they have a little bit of a different um perspective on things from one another which is cool to hear um but yeah, they, but yeah. they've been killing it for sure but yeah like outside of just playing and like testing new things and going to locals uh just listening to content and watching content and stuff like that yeah yeah um, but so bef- before we uh, before we close out uh i do have a contest that uh i kind of came up with um and i'm going to be providing some sleeves and zach is going to be providing a uh the set of the um the city of promos, the city of promos. so the warrior of light cloud lightning yep, yep. for the winner of this contest and the winner of the contest is completely up to what we like and what we yeah. decide. <laughs> so basically, if we like you, congratulations. congratulations. No, but really, here, here, here and, are the rules. And okay. I was going to say real quick, and remember, based on our previous conversations, just because we like you doesn't mean we're going to pick you because we're going to always expect more from you. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah, so 100%. it will not be biased. Yeah. All right. So here are the rules. I want you guys to send me an FF Dex, 50 cards. The 50 cards... Um, is a deck that you've built where you assume every card is every job. So every card is Bart's. Um, in other words, uh, Lena is a knight. She's Including a geomancer. She's a girl. She's a knight. Or was she under, what'd you say? Including what? Uh, including in your hand, not just on the field. Including in your hand. Yeah, so yes. every card is every... Um, job in every situation. Every job in every situation. Um, in addition, you can play any card using any CP. Okay, so you can discard a Genesis to play Delita. Um, and and, and it, as well as every card is every element. So that's co- I, I, I'm not, it's not too complicated, just stick with me. Every card's every element. So every card counts towards Cognazzo. If you have 12 uh, forwards on the board, you're playing oops all forwards, they are all water. They're all also light. Well, I guess they can't all be light, right? Ooh, that's not good. <laughs> except, except light or dark. Except light or dark. Okay, good point. Yeah, but then man. can you pitch light or dark for CP? Yes. Okay, because yes. of every element. Okay. Yes, so you can pitch any card for every element. Um, the light or dark the light or dark rules just don't apply. So you can have an Emperor and a Nidhogg on the board with a Chaos, if you, or with a Cosmos if you wanted. Uh so I just want 50 cards um, of the coolest deck you can find. Uh, if you can kill your opponent on turn one, great. Uh, Zach was trying. He got close to like a turn two close. or so, right? I, I had five damage on my second turn one. Right. <laughs> your second turn one. Oh, nice. Right, right. Okay, I get you. Yeah, All right. Yeah. So I'd like to see what you guys could do. Um, again, we're going to offer you the Decidia promos as well as a pack of sleeves, um, Final Fantasy sleeves that I got this weekend. Um other than that, I have another contest that I'm going to announce a little bit later. Um, but look forward to that. But for now, just send that. You can send that to the Choco Bros uh, page. Uh, don't send them to my personal page. Don't send them to Zach or Cody's personal page. Send them to the Choco Bros page. Just click the link. If you haven't liked um, the page yet, that's an issue. Go like the Choco Bros <laughs> page. Um, and then uh, click it and send us an FF Dex, uh, 50 of the cards that you think is the coolest deck. It's a cool exercise. Um and you're still following like the three play set rule and like all that. It's not yes. like you have fifty thometer. Well, we're using FF decks, and so you can only have three of them anyway. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so yes, you can only have three. Um, I think eventually we'll try this with um, uh, decks with like popper decks. I think eventually we could try it with um, uh, just just with some weird different combinations of, mm-hmm. of decks. But for now, I definitely like this. Um, every card, every color. You can pay with anything. And what was the other one? All jobs. They're all jobs. Yep. So they're not all cost though. So like Lena can still only bring back two drops. 
but she can bring back Skarm, for example. Wait, it was six damage I got. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they can bring back Skarm, um, that that type of thing. Uh, so not can every. I, can I... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, can a particular job searcher, like a Duke yes. Galtana, can search yes. everything? Yes, can search for anything. Okay. Right, so Grammys searches That's for... as much as I'm going to say, because there's a few sweet little interactions that you'll find if you're exploring. Yeah, anyway, so that's that's our contest. Um, <clears throat> do we have anything else for them, guys? Uh, I did want to send another thank you out to James Lockwood uh, for choosing me for Player of the Month. Uh, I got his little care package with the promos and the Final Fantasy dice, uh, so thank you to him. No. No, no hair product? No. <laughs> you're never going to let that uh, one go. That one's never going to die, man. <laughs> I don't need it. It's perfect. Are you kidding? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, the I other know. day we were playing Octagon or testing Octagon. He was watching my match. He's like, I got to go. I got to go to the barber. I'm like, what? Your hair's already done. <laughs> like, what are you, where, are you, where are you going? <laughs> yeah. Is this That'd a be... weekly appointment or what? Well, I was going to the LQ and Jake Lee and Ben and all of them were coming out. So, you know. Oh, so you got to look good. That's it's got to be perfect. You can't look better than Jake Lee, man. They're not even close. Yeah. Shout yeah, out to no, Jake Lee, though. <laughs> Rip second place in his LQ. Oof. What a yeah. bummer. What yeah, a bummer, man. Really. He was t- he was messaging me. He's like, semifinals. Like, yeah, get it, man. Finals. All I got was one word, finals. I was like, yeah, yeah, blah, blah. And then he hasn't messaged me since. <laughs> Way to check in on him. Zach. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Oh, a out there. Yeah. Anyway, close this out. Uh, yeah, but that's going to do it for us uh, this week, guys. As always, uh, make sure to share, like, and subscribe to the YouTube. Uh, and we've been the Choker Bros. I'm Cody Snodgrass. I'm Zach Brown. I'm Sam Snipe Prime. And we're not going to say anything right here. What is it normally to see you next week is what you're waiting for? Yes. We're waiting for you, Zach. Isn't that I forgot. you? <laughs> yeah, normally. <laughs> All right, so we'll see you next week. You're going to cut here. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm, I'm just not cutting. We tried. We tried. That's what I mean. You're going to cut after. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See you 100% next. 100% organic. 100% organic, guys. Man, this week. Oh, I didn't realize so I was up to six damage. Man, it's so close. I'm still recording. Oh. And. With a hoodie on.